<laughs> ladies and gents. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for making it out in the uh, rainstorm. And thanks to all the uh, firefighters for being here with us tonight. Um, we'll go ahead with our program and we'll have that recorded. So if anyone had to miss uh, because they couldn't come out in the storm, uh, we could certainly have them watch it later. And we'll put that in the files of the Historical Society. Uh, this is the second installment of our 175th anniversary uh, historical series. South Fayette Township uh, has been working with the Historical Society of South Fayette Township to put on these events this summer and to celebrate our uh, township's anniversary. Um, we, uh, I definitely want to thank Emily Brady. Uh, she sends her regrets. She couldn't be here tonight. She's uh, recovering from a health issue, and we wish her the best in her speedy recovery, feel free to sign a call get well card for her that's on the front table, and we'll pass that along to her. Uh, we hopefully will see her in August at our uh, August 11th program, which will be about the 70th anniversary of the Little Green Machine marching band and majorettes. So hopefully we'll have good weather that evening, and, uh, and you can make it out for that as well. Um, before we get going, I want to mention also, uh, if you haven't checked out the township table, um, we have some, some flyers and information on upcoming events. And we have our 175th uh, anniversary t-shirts and uh, chocolate bars that are on sale, and that uh, benefits the Historical Society. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to learn more about our four fire departments in South Fayette Township. Uh, most of you probably know, yes, there are four uh, South Fayette. Oak Ridge, Fairview, and Sturgeon, and we are lucky enough to have representatives from all four stations here today. So um, I would like to uh, start by introducing, uh, we'll introduce everyone up here, and then uh, they'll kind of take turns discussing some history of their departments, and then we can have any uh, questions or discussion afterward. Uh, first, we have uh, Bob Rank, who is uh, a founding member of Sturgeon uh, Fire Department, is that correct? Not a a founding member of Oak Ridge, but you were involved in Sturgeon. Uh, your family was involved in, in Sturgeon, uh, so he has some history about Sturgeon and Oak Ridge. Uh, we have Keith Delaney uh, from Sturgeon Volunteer Fire Department. We have Phil McCoskey from Fairview Fire Department. And Steve Lauer from the South Fayette Fire Department in the Cuddy neighborhood. Uh, so please, uh, Bob, if you're ready, uh, we'd love to hear some of your uh, memories and uh, historical information about the fire departments. Thank you. Are these on? Testing one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I was invited to uh, speak here tonight because I uh, thought that I knew uh, something about the fire service and some of my memories. So uh, I'll start with the uh, uh, origin of the Sturgeon Volunteer Fire Department, and uh, of which uh, my father had uh, been the president of Sturgeon Fire Department for over 20 years, and my uncle uh, John Hyduk was uh, the chief for quite a while, and my uncle Mike Shears was uh, treasurer uh, when they first started out. Uh, if you ever had the thought of standing out on the street and watching your house burn to the ground with all your possessions, it's a terrible thing to even think of. But my wife told me a story years ago when she was in sixth grade at Sturgeon School and they were seated in, in, the, in the classrooms, and one student noticed that there was uh, smoke coming up from the lower end of Sturgeon. And of course, all the kids got up, and uh, one student in particular, by the name of Milton Ledbetter, looked out and he saw his house in flames. And <clears throat> he rushed to get out of the room. The teacher grabbed him by the shirt, tore his shirt, and Milton kept going out the door, down the hall, and down over the, <coughs> across the railroad tracks, and he stood there watching his house burn. So it was a terrible thing, and I think this uh, definitely, this 
like to the origin, the uh, start of the uh, the Sturgeon Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, the men got together and uh, they raised some money, and uh, they had a uh, the only homemade fire truck that I've ever seen. Uh, they got a uh, Studebaker chassis, truck chassis, I think it had been a garbage truck, and they, uh, one of the members on the garage, he welded together a, a water tank, which they mounted on, on the chassis. They obtained a um, fire pump, and they fashioned a, a hose bed from uh, uh, the steel steel plates. So uh, at the parades that they went to, they were known as the only fire department with the homemade fire truck. <coughs> uh, later on, they decided to build it, put, put up a, a building, but they didn't have the money. So just temporarily for for that fire truck, it was. Uh, position next to my uncle's bar, he was the chief, and it was covered with a tarpaulin. So they couldn't get a, a, a fire rating from the fire underwriters, and uh, the insurance companies wouldn't reduce any rates uh, because of uh, no real place to put the truck. So <coughs> what happened was they uh, got together and uh, got enough money to put up a building, uh, which the building still stands now, and uh, it's part of the complex that they have right now uh, on the site of the big fire in China. The uh, alarm system was rather unique. The uh, man that uh, was a carpenter, one of, one of the members was a carpenter, and he fashioned a uh, platform. They got four World War II fire sirens, uh, air raid sirens together, wired them up, and they placed this on the roof of our house, which was the house and combination house and store. And what happened after that, they uh, put a uh, button on the back porch, and the fire call number was McDonald 4911. And uh, that was our home phone number, and that was the store number. And I think they chose that because there was somebody there most of the time. So when the fire call came in, my mother would go out to the back porch, push the button, and keep pushing the button until a fireman came by, went down to the firehouse, and she told them the location of the fire. So uh, quite a primitive way of uh, an alarm system compared to what we have today. So let's forward now to 1956. Uh, I had just come out of the Army and we were building our home on Oak Ridge Road, which wasn't Oak Ridge Road at that time. It was called the Bridgeville Oakdale Road, and some people call it the Oakdale Bridgeville Road, so it was very confusing. So. Later on, that was changed to Oak Ridge after we got the name for the fire department. <clears throat> I got a call from a fellow called Felix Mazik, uh, who told me he was interested in forming a fire department in the Battle Ridge area. And uh, probably about a dozen men, myself included, met several times at the federal school, which is now the federal firearms, and we petitioned the state uh, for the uh, charter. We received the charter in May of 1956, and uh, from there we were able to, to gather some money together from the citizens in the area, fund drive, and we uh, were able to buy a, a, a piece of property, I think it was an acre and a half we bought originally from Henry and Meyer, and I think the uh, lot cost the fire department $500. It was a lot that was very steep, so uh, all 
the members got together and we did some pick and shovel work. We had a tractor with a scraper blade on it and we were able to put the driveway in and dig the foundation of the uh, building. Uh, we needed money to build the building, so we went down, I think there were four or five of us, went down to the Union National Bank in Bridgeville, and we had an appointment with uh, Cy Holman, who was the president of the bank, and showed him the plans for the building, and uh, I can remember he always had a big fat cigar in his mouth, chewing on his cigar, looks at the plans and said, this looks good, fellas, but when you have some more money, you can come back to see me. So one of the members spoke up and he said, Mr. Holman, <clears throat> if we had more money, we wouldn't be here talking to you today. So we walked out of that bank, went across the street to the Bridgeville Trust, and got a, an appointment with uh, Mr. McDivitt, who was the president of that bank, and uh, he graciously invited him, invited us to his office, and we told him what we wanted to do, showed him the plans, and he said, uh, fellas, give me 10 days, he said, I'll, I'll get back to you, and I'll, I'll bring it before the board. A week later, he called and said, I need a meeting with the officers to sign the papers, and we'll have a check for you for $26,000, the amount that we had requested. After that, uh, prior to that, we had uh, housed the trucks. We had two trucks, the 1929 American of France that was donated from the Homeville Fire Department in West Mifflin. And uh, it was quite an old truck at the time that we got it. And one of the neighbors of ours at the property by the name of Bill Taylor was a, a uh, fine old gentleman, uh, although he was kind of cantankerous at times. But he said, I have the uh, pigeon coop here. He used to raise fresh pigeons. And uh, he says, I'll, I'll give you the use of it for as long as you need it. So it was big enough to house the two trucks that we had. We got uh, another a squad car from uh, the Oak Hill Fire Department. And uh, it, when we had a meeting, we had to take the equipment out of the building so that we had room to sit uh, to have the meeting. Uh, after we uh, contracted out the, the masonry work on the building. Uh, we were able to have it finished in 1961. We started in 1960, and we were able to uh, <coughs> have functions such as Vigo, and uh, later on we had Sorry, we had uh, fish fries, we had pancake breakfasts and dances to raise funds. The latest auxiliary before the was formed before the building was built, and I can remember we had uh, several car parties in our basement, which was unfinished, and uh, we used those things to raise money for the fire department. I was elected president, I think, uh, about eight years after the fire department started, and I held that position for uh, over 30 years. And uh, I tried to get someone else to take it, but I guess I was stuck with it for that length of time. <laughs> the uh, worst, fire, worst fire that I attended was probably 20 years ago, there was a tractor trailer truck loaded with Canadian Club whiskey, and it went down the Battle Ridge, down the hill, and he couldn't manage the turn at the bottom. So he had hit the gas line, 
a lead, lady into the house. The, the fire broke out, the house was burning, the cab of the, of the truck was burning, and the whiskey was flowing, uh, not being consumed. And uh, that was probably the, the, the worst uh, fire that I, I can remember. Uh, as a, uh, just as a matter of showing you, <clears throat> telling you how much the funds that the fire departments in the township need. Uh, we purchased a pumper, I think it's been eight years uh, that we've had this uh, Pierce pumper, and the cost of it was $528,000. A far cry from the 20-some thousand that we paid for the first pumper that we bought. And uh, my job is uh, still <coughs> with the uh, fund drive, and uh, we uh, have that as an annual uh, fair to raise funds for the fire department. Uh, I can remember we had uh, teams of like two or three men that would go out and canvas the area, the residents in, in, the, in our area, and uh, we would give them a, a, a coin card, which they could insert coins, and there was a, uh, an envelope in the back for bills. And I can remember this one door I knocked on, there was an old fellow there, and uh, he uh, was living by himself, and I told him what we were there for, and uh, he said, I don't know. But he reached in his pocket and he gave me a quarter. <laughs> and I was very polite with him. I was shocked that he would give me a quarter. But I told him very politely, I said, Sir, maybe you need this quarter more than we do. And I gave it back to him. And I, he took it back. <laughs> so that's uh, about all I have to say for him. Uh, the, my experiences with the fire departments, and uh, uh, we wish the, the best for all, all of the departments in the area. And uh, I'll turn this over now to Keith, and he can tell you maybe his experiences. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Keith Delaney. Um, I'm currently Assistant Chief of the Sturgeon Volunteer Fire Department. I also hold positions of treasurer and disbursement officer and, and like blah blah. These are positions that apparently nobody else in the department wants. So um, I've had positions in the past of president, reporting secretary, vice president, uh, lieutenants. Um, I've been with the department for 27 years now. Uh, I'm third generation, both my father and my grandfather and just about everybody in my family at some point has been active in our fire department. Um, a few years back, we, we were updating our website, and I, I come with, up to the decision that I wanted to have a history section um, on, the, on the page, on the website. Um, some of it's up right now. I, I'm not going to bother going to scroll through all that, um, because Bob touched on some things, and I, I kind of know some of it for verbatim. Um, but I couldn't, I want to say that I couldn't have done this without Bob. Um, after talking to my father, who had been assistant chief for 20 plus years, and um, former chief Larry Deleuze, who had been chief for 21 years, um, there were a lot of gaps in that history, and without Bob, I would have never been able to fill in those gaps. So um, if, you, if you do get a, a moment, uh, SturgeonVFD.org, feel free to jump on there and look at the history page. There's also some historic pictures of Sturgeon. Um, and then we have several items over here at the table as well. Um, basically, it started out in 1943 uh, on Main Street in Sturgeon. There was a hotel called the Markovitz Hotel. Um, a child played with matches in the upstairs, caught the curtains on fire, and before it was all said and done, uh, an entire block had burned to the ground. Ten families were left homeless. Uh, at the time, we had not had a fire department, so we had to rely on... Um, Midway Borough, uh, I think at the time McDonald Borough was actually not allowed to leave their borough. So we have Midway Borough, Oakdale Borough, and South Fayette Fire Department that showed up. 
Um, at, at that time, you know, the trucks didn't travel much faster than 15 miles an hour, so you can imagine how long it took them to get there um, once they actually received the call. 1943 was um, during World War II, so a lot of the young men in the towns were away at war as well. Um, so when they came back in 45 and 46, they got together and decided that there was a need for a fire department in the town of Sturgeon. Um, and in 46, they established that fire department and started it with, um, as Bob had mentioned, with a donated truck, um, American La France pumper from Dravosburg Fire Department. And that lasted for about a year, and then, then they came up with the pumper that they made out of the old Studebaker fire truck that was uh, the homemade fire truck. Um, in 1951 and 52, we purchased twin Mack open cab pumpers. They were identical in nature. Um, and ran calls along with an Apache ambulance that we had purchased a few, about six or seven years after that. Um, they ran calls all the way up until 1971. Through those years, we had built the garage um, in the footprint of the fire of 1943, pretty much, and then added on a social hall. Before that, we had run bingos in what um, was called the Eagles Club which if you've ever driven on Noblestown Road and you know where Velocity's garage is, there's a three-story building that sits there that's apartments nowadays. Um, at the time, Main Street was cul-de-sac. At the end, there was no bridge of, except for a footbridge. And that's how all the people from the town would go over to play bingo. They'd walk across this footbridge. So in the 50s, we built the hall, added on to the garage on Main Street um, to start having the bingos there. Um, we also started having fairs. Um, I believe in 1949 was the first fair, and they were held at the Sturgeon Baseball Field, which was also right by the Eagles Club. Until 1950, I believe, well, you can feel free to correct me, they had a monsoon right before the fair, and the entire fairgrounds were flooded. Ever since then, they had it in the lot of the fire department today. Um, so they added the hall, they added an addition on in the early 60s, which included a, uh, a bar, a meeting office, a stage, and in 1971 we purchased um, our first piece of brand new apparatus since the Apache, which was a 1971 Seagrave pumper. Um, at that time we paid $25,000 for it, so you can see um, it's a far cry from the $500 plus thousand dollars that you pay today for a pumper. In 1980 we purchased another brand new Seagrave pumper. Um, we had already sold one of the Macs when we uh, purchased the first Seagrave, and we still had the, um, the other Mac, the 1952 Mac. Uh, that Mac ran its last call in 1988, I believe. It was for a barn fire on North Road in North Bay Township. That Mac today sits under a tarp up on uh, Route 980 Robinson Highway in McDonald, PA. Um, so we bought the 1980 Seagrave, and then through the 80s, um, we still ran ambulance. We had had a uh, purchase a Dodge van style ambulance, and, and we were one of the few fire departments in the area that still ran our own ambulance service for our people. Um, through the 80s, Rescue West became prominent in North Fayette, and Southbridge became prominent in South Fayette, and um, calls for the use of our ambulance dwindled and dwindled and dwindled. Um, through the 90s uh, when we purchased the brand new ambulance and come the end of the 90s it was, relevant, it was relevant and evident that we were not going to be needed for ambulance service anymore as more ambulance service became privatized. So um, from then we went on to provide QRS for the township. In uh, 1999 we bought a brand new Pierce bunker for $375,000. Um, and we've continued. I mean, we've continued on through that through the 2000s. Uh, currently, we run a 1999 Pierce. We run a 2001 E1 rescue pumper. We run a 2010 uh, heavy rescue, and um, a 2007 squad and a 2005 air trailer. And our latest piece of equipment, which we just purchased last month, was is a uh, Polaris UTV for mainly for the Panhandle Trail, which we cover portions of. Um, so, we, it, the thing that I think amazes me the most is how, how far we've gone um, through the years. All the, all the departments, when you look at their histories and, and where, how they've grown and, and still are needed, um, you know, obviously we had a 
big fire last night just off uh, of Miller Trunk off South Ed Street, just down the road here. So um, the departments are needed, and and we, you know, we appreciate everybody that came out tonight to to hear the histories of these departments. Um, we're still here. We're still running, and and that's pretty much kind of about it as far as. Uh, our fire department does. The one thing that I remember, um, my father's told me a lot of stories, um, and, and one of the one of the ones that always stuck with me was um, one year they were having a Halloween party at our fire department. So naturally, all the members and their wives and, and had showed up, and they had wearing costume. And at the time, Campbell's Airport was still in operation up on the hill along uh, Cecil Sturgeon Road. Um, so they had received a report of a fire at Campbell's Airport. The gentleman who had taken it, taken the call, mistook where it was actually at and thought it was Campbell's Run Road, which we all know is Alvin Robinson. Um, so my father relayed that, that he was riding behind the old Mac with the Apache um, ambulance, and there was a guy with his hip waiter boots on and his fire coat and his helmet, and this tiger tail just swinging back and forth in the wind on the back of the truck as they went to this fire that did uh, ended up not being there. Um, but yeah, I want to I want to give a thanks to Andrea for putting this all together. Um, I, th I think it was wonderful to acknowledge the fire departments. We're celebrating 70 years this year. I know Cuddy's selling is celebrating 80 years. Um, so it's kind of a, a monumental year with everything that we have going on here. So thank you for all coming out. My name's Philip McCoskey. Uh, don't have the history that the two previous gentlemen have come up with with Fairview Fire Department. I just moved into the township in 1975, and my understanding is more or less from the stories that we get coming back from a fire and remember this fire or remember that fire. So since 1975 I moved in and uh, I lived two doors away from the fire department so it ended up that every time the fire whistle went off I was getting up in the middle of the night to see which way the fire truck went. Well, it goes down towards Bridgeville if it doesn't pass my house. So I says, I was working on the house at the time, so after I got, I worked on the house for five years, and I told my wife, I says, I'm done. I says, I gotta find out how to join the fire department. So I walked up to the fire department, and uh, I says, how do, you, how do you join the fire department? He says, well, fill out the application. So I filled out the application, and uh, lo and behold, they accepted the application, and I became uh, a member. So I told him, I says that I work on big trucks so I can drive the truck. So the officer who was Tommy Thomas at the time uh, took me out for a uh, test drive and I was driving the 19, what was the Ford? 69. 61? 69. 69 Ford cab over. Well, the cab over has a shift linkage. It looks like a piece of spaghetti. And a lot of guys couldn't drive the standard shift. And it ended up that I was driving it and I wasn't even using a clutch. And Tommy looked at me and he says, you're not, doing, you're not using a clutch. I said, no. I says, you know, I've been driving these around on the job that I have. So I says, I didn't. I didn't think I needed to drive it. He says, well, as far as I'm concerned, you're a driver right now, he says. So I moved from the uh, Ford to the newer engine, which was uh, 96. a 96. And uh, so from the time basically I got involved with the fire department, I've been a driver. Uh, and before I moved to South Fayette, I was down in Heidelberg. And I'd go and help the Heidelberg Fire Department on ambulance calls because I was working down there and I drove their truck down there 
uh, on calls when they didn't have nobody. But I did more firefighting down at Heidelberg than I did at South Fayette because I was two doors away from South Fayette or Fairview, and it ended up that I was the first guy there. I was the first guy in a truck, and I told him, I says, I'll drive the truck, get it to the fire, get your water, you just put the fire up. So that's the way it's been with me. And like I said, the stories that I have are just stories that I've heard down through the years that the, all the firefighters have handled uh, at our fire station. And uh, the history goes back to 1950 is when we was organized. And uh, since then, from what I understand, there was a group of guys got together and they built the garage. And uh, the one member ended up, he was a taxidermist, he ended up buying uh, the first truck. His name was Orville, wasn't it? Jack Cross. Jack Cross. Jack Cross. So he ended up, uh, he bought the first truck, so he owned the truck. Well, there was a raw-raw match, and he took his truck and went home. And uh, it ended up that that truck sat down uh, at his uh, office or his shop for years to the point that a, a tree grew up through the truck. And whenever we had uh, Richie Snyder from Foremost bring the truck up to our station, which was sitting down here that I know of for 20 some years, and I don't know how much. Prior to that, it was down there, but it was pretty rusty. So Richie went down, we cut the tree down, brought the truck up to the station, ended up that uh, he said, if you get that truck rebuilt, he said, I'll paint it for nothing. So we looked at it and looked at it and looked at it, and some of the parts on there were so rusted that it was just like a a ball of rust, so we couldn't do nothing with the truck. And uh, it ended up that we ended up selling to a company uh, up in Canada. The guy bought old trucks, so he ended up purchasing that truck off of us. But uh, that's some of the uh, history that I know about. And like we have the chief at Oak Ridge is a former uh, member of Fairview. Uh, we have two firefighters at Cuddy that are uh, former members of uh, Fairview and uh, we've lost a lot of good people to the other fire companies in the township and uh, we right now service 79 uh, and uh, from county line to 79 and then to the bridge going into Bridgeville. So uh, we run, we have no uh, ambulance service. We run fire and rescue, and we run anywhere from 225 to 250 calls a year. So uh, we're pretty active, and uh, the biggest problem that we have today is the fact that the younger generation don't have the time to devote the volunteer to help the fire departments. And uh, we're finding that there's a shortage of firefighters in almost all the uh, fire stations. And uh, if we could get the younger generation to help support us, uh, it would be helpful. But if they don't, we're going to probably end up going into a paid fire company someplace along the line. And probably within the next five or ten years, if not sooner. So, uh, we just hope that uh, this history that we've brought to use uh, inspires somebody to become a firefighter and uh, join our ranks. I think that's all I have. Thank you. I'll switch uh, computers here so Steve can show us some good stuff.
I'll tell you, I'll start off while we're getting the cable ready. I'm Steve Lauer, and uh, I'm fairly young into fire service, and uh, the reason I joined the fire service was my son. He was 14 years old, and he said, Dad, I want to join the fire department. And I grew up, knew a bunch of the firemen, and they said, well, why don't you join too? So I said, okay, I'll be a fire policeman. Well, I fill out my application, and what did I do? I checked firefighter. <laughs> well, they told me I was a firefighter then. So 188 hours later of training, I end up being a firefighter one at my 50th birthday. So uh, I'm fairly young at this, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to do most of mine are pictures. I hope you can see them. I know that. Uh, I hope you can see the pictures halfway decent. I know um, I, most of my history is from the pictures because uh, I'm very young and what I like everybody else says, uh, we learn from the older members. With uh, South Fayette being the first fire department that South Fayette had and at 80 years old, our important thing is apparatus, which are fire trucks, which what I've learned is we do not get rid of them. We keep everything that we have forever. <laughs> and uh, so this, uh, this is a picture which, back in the old college days, you'd look at the map and it'd send you to Treveskin. And you had to find the city of Treveskin on a map, and you can't find it because there is no city sign. But I found this picture in the history of the, fire, uh, the train station with the fire department in Treveskin. So I always like to say there is a Treveskin. So here, here is the 1937 uh, Aaron Fox, which was one of the first new fire trucks that uh, <coughs> South Fayette bought. And this, this is a picture, as you can see here, from 1938. And they, I, I'm trying to decide if it was a, a fire or if they were just having an a, event with the people on it. This is the, the current picture of the 37 Aaron Fox, which is truly is one of our number three engines out still to this day <coughs> on, the, on the records. This is a picture of the 1955 and the 1965, which we still have in use. This one here, I do, it's an old Dodge. I do not know the history on it, but it was a picture of it, I, so I threw it in there. There is a picture of the current, the Aaron's 1955 Aaron's Fox, which is our number two engine. There's our international 1965 International Brush Truck, which is still in use. We used it uh, last week for a brush fire. Matter of fact, there's one brush fire, we might have pulled Sturgeon's engine out of the mud with it. Was <laughs> with that truck? Yes. And they, they've gone to, like ever said, this would have been a utility that they used in the whole troop uh, members. They had an ambulance at one point. This was what the telescope they had that uh, I believe they sold to North Fayette when they got rid of it. It's stationed at their time. And I think it's still there. Yep. With the B on it, which people will <coughs> always ask, what is up with the B? And I have no honest answer to that. This is our uh, utility we have. It's an F-350 uh, 4x4. This is our 1991 Dash. That's our number one engine out, that uh, Pierce Dash. And this is our 2006 Pierce ladder, which has a 105-foot ladder on it. Uh, with, a, with the changing of our, our township, we need the height to get in. Membership. When I was going through the membership, I started finding the old pictures of the membership. And that's what I, you know, you look at that, and there's an old group of men that did this for free, just like we do it now. We are not paid. We do, we're all have other jobs. I am, uh, I drive school bus during the year and I work construction in the summertime. Uh, we have a lawyer, we have construction workers, we have Teddy here, He's a, he does uh, fire sprinkler systems. So we all do different jobs and this is all just a passion that we have to do. So I went through and then I tried to find the pictures for because we're doing history and all, we all remember the white front. 
And there's a picture of uh, they, when they did some training in coppers. This was uh, another group of the membership when they were getting the check. This was uh, with the Telesquirt, another group of the membership. It's all about the membership for us. We are a family of, of firefighters. And as we found last night, when we had to call and we needed more manpower, more fire departments came. Not even from just South Fayette. They came from Bridgeville. They came from Washington County. So we all worked together, even us being different. We all still work together. So then I said, well, what else do we do? Years ago, they had the Fireman's Fair. I don't remember it. I'm not old enough to remember the Fireman's Fair. But I found this picture here, and I had to go through and look at all the cars because I'm like, look at the age of these cars. And that you can see that the fire, they had a Ferris wheel for the fair. Parades were always big for the fire department. It was then and it is now. And I really don't know the history on this one, but that would be uh, the 55, and it looks like they're doing a, some sort of fundraising. Back to parades. I guess we like parades. Again, that would be an old picture of a parade. They had the South Vet Drum and Bugle Corps. Once again, parade. We do training and, and programs for students, adults, children. This one here, uh, we were doing a one for the library where I read a book to the library kids and then uh, we showed them some of our equipment. This was a Boy Scout troop that came through the fire department. We also did birth we do birthday parties, so we took the truck to a birthday party. This was an old picture I found where they took the older equipment down to the point and they what they did was they pumped water from the point from the rivers and did and uh, flowed the water, like, you know, from the water. And so many people came up to the older vehicles and said they run so much smoother than any of the old stuff because that's how they drafted. They drafted the water then. You didn't have the hydrants. And once again, we're going to a parade. You see, and, and we're going to a parade. So it's just, we do a lot of parades. Uh, every year at Christmas time, I think all the fire departments, we drive around and uh, with Santa Claus on the truck. And there's a picture of us afterwards. And then we got lucky this year that we got to have the Stanley Cup on our fire truck. And then, of course, we also do funerals for the fire department. And I thought about incidents. And, of course, up until last night, I said fires are one of the rare things we do is fires. We do a lot more other things than fires. And, of course, then we have a big fire last night. But here is one that they had from, uh, just by looking at the cars, this looks to be like in the 80s, maybe. Mm. And, uh, that, was, nice. that was actually back in 2002, I think. Well, then, then we started talking about the airport, and I found some old pictures of, of the airport. And then when, when I look at the gear that we wear now, and then what they're wearing then, it really amazes at the updates that we have with gear. This was... Uh, where we're blocking traffic for uh, the police department. That was at uh, Knights Inn when they had the, a criminal there that they had. And this was when uh, the white front, or fatty gaddies, burnt down. Then the, the wheel, they had a fire at the wheel. Now, this isn't the wheel that's there now. This was the old wheel, which was across the street, where McDonald's is. And then we stew brush fires. And then we all remember the flood. And then we do a lot of traffic accidents. Now with the amount of vehicles that are on the roads and the speeds that they're going with 50, we do a lot of traffic accidents. We also help with light flight when they come in and need our assistance. Once again, a few traffic accident pictures that we have. This is Miller's Run right up the street here. Now I said training, back to training. When they, for what I understand, most firefighters Back early days, you were just a fireman. You came and you did the job, you did it. Then they said you had to go to class and they did it at the fire department for 24 hours and then you were a firefighter. Now with me, I did 188 hours and I'm sure that that's in the near future going to be a lot more than that. There's so much technology now with thermal imaging cameras and so forth that we need to train almost every week 
just to keep up. This is one of the, our, we had a training sim simulator going through windows. This is where a group of them did a live burn at a house. Even back in the days with the old telesport, they trained also. Back to vehicle accidents. We, this was, by looking at the uniforms, this is probably 20 years ago, them training cutting open the car. And then probably 10 years later, them doing it again. And then probably five years ago, and then just in the past, we're still doing that for the car. This was uh, from Maysby State Hospital. We did a training exercise there where we did forcible entry before they tore the buildings down. This is where a group of them was doing a training sim simulation for RIT, which is Rapid Intervention. That's a group of firefighters that would stay back and wait in case something would happen, they would go in and help. What is our future? Well, I didn't know where to throw this picture in, but this was the past. <laughs> this is the old, this is where uh, Koski's building is now, and that was the original fire station and bus garage. They shared the bus garage with the fire, you know, with the fire department. In our future, we see the buildings that are going up between hotels, hospitals, more hotels, the schools are growing taller, we're, we're definitely needing more for uh, <clears throat> equipment just for those new, new stuff we have. And that's really all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Very informative. I saw some pictures and heard some stories that I had not heard before. Um, we appreciate it. Uh, we can have some uh, discussion and, and questions now. Um, and I'd like to kick it off with a question. I'm wondering um, if you could explain. I understand there are uh, fire districts in South Bay that you each cover uh, uh, an area of the township, and that's your fire district. Could, uh, could you explain why that's important for residents to know uh, what district they live in? So we know what, where to respond. So we know where to respond to, I'm sure. Calling with the answer. Calling with the answer. Um, I understand there's some maybe, uh, it, it helps with uh, funding that you might get if residents uh, tell their maybe insurance companies. Well, based on they? based on our districts, our fund drives go out to the people in our district. So, um, you know, Cuddy has their district, Fairview has their district, Oak Ridge has their district, and Sturgeon has their district. So we only solicit to the people in our own fire zone. Um, as far as insurance purposes go, um, what they call the ISO rating it's based on the township as a whole. So all four fire departments um, contribute to what our classification is there. Um, districts are more or less determined by locations of the fire departments and, and um, not always, but fairly close to who the closest department is. So it's broken down by um, distance a lot of times, um, who can get there the quickest, things like that. So. Great. Uh, I might add something to that. Uh, I understand, of course, I haven't fought a fire for years at my age, but uh, if there's a structure fire in the township, I believe that all four fire departments are uh, called to any structure fire. Am I right? Um, not 100% true, but, but like I know for Sturgeon, um, if we have something in our fire zone, um, Oak Ridge, Cuddy are on first alarm, Fairview's on second alarm. Um, the reason being is um, where we're situated there, we're only two and a half miles from Oakdale Fire Department and two and a half miles from McDonald Fire Department. So we, you know, most departments, just like Fairview, we utilize uh, Bridgeville because they're a lot closer to them. Um, they use Bridgeville and, and Cuddy. So, we don't, we're on second alarm for Fairview just like they're on second alarm for us. So it's not 100% the case, but um, you try to use the most, the most close department to you uh, in those situations just because it just makes sense to have the closest guys coming. Um, 
most fires, uh, small fires or anything like that, can be handled by three or four departments, and then it kind of builds out from there uh, in alarm, you know, the alarm phase. It kind of, I guess we'd say doubles and triples with each alarm. So the second alarm will double your response. Uh, third alarm will triple your response, and so on. Great. So helping each other within the township and McDonald Borough is allowed to leave their borough nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they have a the problem. Okay. All right. Any questions or comments? Come on over here. I'm like Sally <laughs> Jesse Raphael tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I mean that for your work, your honesty, and saving your lives and buildings. And I know. You work very hard, and I know you need more people. Dumb question. Years back, I used to watch the Battle of the Borough. <laughs> Whatever happened to that? Bring it back. We still do it. We yeah, still there, do it. There are still we'll departments that have yeah. uh, we, competitions. We go, we go to Muse, and uh, <coughs> they like to pull me because I'm that over 50 to put on their team. <laughs> Does Allegheny County Convention still do their... Do the Battle of Earl. I know that that's always been a part of the Allegheny County Firemen's Convention, that they hold an actual Battle of Earl. There's not very many departments that do it anymore. Yeah, Bridgeville, when they do the community, they 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 had it down there. Now, I don't know if this past year if they had it or not, but they usually had a Battle of um, Barrels down there. So. Uh, it's still alive, but it isn't as popular as it was years ago. Uh, I might add something to that. Uh, I recall when I was too young to join the fire department at Sturgeon that uh, they had water battles, and one year they had women fighting women, two teams, and they didn't have a barrel at that time. And as dangerous as it was, they were directing the stream of water on the actual other side. <laughs> and, uh, I can remember my Aunt Carmen, uh, she was probably in her 40s, 50s at that time, and uh, I can recall her uh, being the lead person on, on one of the teams that they had, but uh, they discontinued that because it, it was too dangerous. There's actually a, a photo of one of the teams over on the table there. Um, there I fi actually found several photos tonight, um, and one of them was of the one team squirting the other team straight in the face. Um, but yeah, it's, if, if you get a chance to go over there and look, you'll see it. One of the uh, ladies auxiliary teams that fought in that battle. I think uh, Laverne and I are going to be reviving that ladies' barrel battle one day, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I have two questions for Keith. Yes. My first question is, what caused the fire at the Sturgeon School, and when did it happen? What year was it? Oh, boy. Um, that's a little bit before my time. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I don't think the school was actually in use. Yeah. Yes. It was, it was, it was it? on a weekend. Say, the answer, you're laughing. Yeah, he would probably know better than me. Um, I do know that the elementary school at South Ed was uh, built only a couple years after that. Uh, I think in 1974 is, is the elementary school up there. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. Do you, do you remember, Bob, what the cause of that was? There are several stories. My dad would know. He was, he was there at the time. I don't know the year. It was December 18th, and our house was right in front of the school. We lived on the corner there. Right there. Okay. Um, I, it was in the early 70s, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I went to school there. Was it the 60s? Yeah. They all 60s. came over. They came over to Morgan. For, it was 66 or 67. Pat, do you know? Uh, I, I think it was in the 60s, I believe. Do you know it started it because you were a when it was you? No. <laughs> there, there are, are, are uh, several stories, but... Uh, uh, let me say this, that I cannot answer that. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't answer that in an open statute of limitations. Because my name is James Comey. 
<laughs> well, I went to Sturgeon and I have fond memories of that. My yeah. second question is how far, I should say, how close to the fire hydrant does a home have to be in order for the fire service to reach it? Um, we typically carry, and I, I can speak for my department, but I think it's kind of general along those lines, anywhere between 1,100 and 1,200 feet of uh, what we call LDH, which is large diameter hose, um, to hook up to a hydrant. Now, we're fairly fortunate in South Fayette. I, I know that we don't have any streets in our zone that are not hydranted. I don't know, do you guys, is anybody else? Yeah. Well, okay, yeah, so Rigard Hill Road and uh, Cecil Rising. That Cecil doesn't count as a street, that's more like a gravel. <laughs> Cecil Rising, Cecil Sturgeon. Um, there, there is no water from yeah, one of the Cecil okay. Sturgeon or Cecil Rising to the other. You have to go to McDonald's or Robin's Battle Ridge. Yeah, those, those would probably be the only ones, I think. Pulpit. 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 Those are all dead end streets, though, right? No. Uh, Pulpit is on the bottom of the boat. Yeah. I think Bowman has a hydrant at the end of his house. No. no. We ended up having the fire, the farmhouse up there catch on fire, and the lady was living there, and her husband was. Uh, working at King's. <clears throat> so she calls her husband at work and says that the house is on fire. <laughs> okay, and she's, uh, her husband says, did you call the fire department? She said, well, I called you. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> well, she tried to put it out with the fire hose. By the time we got there, it ended up that uh, Cuddy had set up a reserve tank and we had trucks with tankers coming in and dumping water. And when we got there, uh, my truck was ending up pumping water for the crew that was going in. And uh, the, the uh, reserve tank that they have that they dump the water in probably holds 500 or 1,000 gallons of water. So the guys were going in the front door and the color of the flames and that started changing. And all of a sudden, I ran out of water, and there's another truck pulled up to dump the water. They pulled up, dumped the water, I used that, and then that truck wouldn't move. So by the time they pulled that truck away from the tank so that they could get another tanker in to drop the water, the fire went back up, and the only thing standing the next morning was the chimney. So that was the first house that we ever lost in whenever I was with the fire department. So. We do have contingencies for those types of things. Um, there are stations, particularly in Washington County, that do run tankers. Um, and, and what we'll do, it's called a shuttle operation. So basically, like he said, they'll drop a dump, what they call a dump tank. And dump tanks can hold anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 gallons of water, depending on their size. And um, basically, your trucks, your tankers, and or um, your larger fire trucks that hold over a thousand gallons will run back and forth from a hydrant wherever, however far that may be, and dump water into that tank. And one of your pumpers will pump to the, the fire engines at the scene. So there are contingencies. I know Mod Mine Road, which was what two years ago, two mm -hmm. three years ago, um, we laid every uh, stretch. We laid uh, eleven hundred feet off the back of our engine to get <coughs> up to that house. Um, so we were right to the end of our limits. And, and actually, the one on Saigon Road right. last, last year, um, yeah, we actually ran out, and because the driveway was so long back to this house, we had to have a second truck come in and lay. Um, there was a hydrant right off the road, but the driveway was just really long, so we had to lay in an extra. And uh, Teddy, did we have a uh, did relay, we, pump. We relay pump right in the middle of that? Yeah, I thought so. So we actually had to put a fire truck in the center of that, because. <laughs> The hose is so long, you lose pressure over so much, so much distance. Um, we actually had to add a fire truck in the center of it to push the water even further. All right, who else? I was wondering what Bob would do if he did his daughter's wedding and the fire whistle goes off. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that pretty well. <laughs> oh, a true story. I, I, I either 
had a tux on or a white, or, white, or a white <laughs> and uh, the, uh, towards the end of the wedding, the uh, siren blew, and uh, uh, our, my son Alan and myself and other fellows that were at the uh, wedding, uh, we just put on our coats and boots and went to it. Uh, it was either a fire or an accident. I think it was an accident. But there, it was, it was pretty memorable. <laughs> At least the call wasn't to your wedding. <laughs> that came later, though. <laughs> Any other comments? Hi, Paula. Just in time. I'm sure you have lots of comments and questions. Uh, Paula Simmons, our recreation director. Thanks for help, Paula, uh, for helping put this together tonight. Uh, any other comments or questions for Bob, Keith, Phil, or Steve? Currently, what's your memberships at, and where would you ideally like to see them? <laughs> Our membership, we probably have 20 people on a roster, and we probably have six to eight active fire, firefighters. So that's why I say we haven't we got two people that have moved into the district that uh, joined, and they weren't firefighters, but they joined and they've been going to school, putting that 188 hours in. And it's difficult for these young men to come in. You figure they work eight hours a day, five days a week, then they want to, we want them to give up their weekend to go to school for eight hours a day. So mother says, hey, the kids are going to go play ball. you got to take them here. they got to go there. Or, you know, you've got to spend some time with the family. And we understand that. And, but the, the federal government doesn't understand that. They make us get the guys trained so that they can be uh, able to go into a farm. If they don't have the training legally, they're not allowed to go into a burning building. They can only do exterior help. So, you know, it's difficult to find somebody that wants to give up that kind of time. And like I said, the younger generation, they're on a the fast track. And if they got a couple kids, they're going to play. One's playing ball, one's uh, going skating or dancing or wherever it's at. And uh, they can't give it up. Their family's more important. So this is where you either going to they're either going to have to come up with some answer to get members to want to either give up that time with a reward or they're going to have to start paying people, give them a job. So I don't know. We've talked about this for years and we see it coming to reality that uh, the people aren't volunteering and we have to start thinking about something. I mean, I've been on many a calls where there's two or three people that respond at one or two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, because they ain't going to get up because they got to get up to go to work at five o'clock or six o'clock. And if you stay up half the night, like last night, we got out, we got toned out at 917. That was our station, Fairview. And I got back into the station at 2.10, okay, and I got into bed at 3 o'clock because we had to service the, uh, the equipment that we used on the truck and we had to put it back in service before we could leave the station so that if there's another call, the truck has to be ready to roll down the road. So that, that's what happens, but you know. Just a certain few people come to the call. And every station that was there had to do the same thing. And uh, Cuddy was there the longest, and I'm sure them guys got in later than I, than I did. It was 3.30. <laughs> so, they were down there cleaning the trucks today, we saw them. So that's what I'm saying. It's, people don't understand. And we have, we have a, a little community right next to our fire station that the people or complaining that the fire whistle goes on. <laughs> they don't have to get out of bed. We've got to get out of bed, okay? So, uh, it's quite the paradox. I mean, 30 years ago, we had, everybody had members out the wazoo. I mean, 
we'd have no problem with members. We needed money. Yeah. Now, when money's doing okay, I think we're all, I mean, we could all use more money, but we're all doing okay money-wise. Now the members just don't care. Fifty years ago when these fire departments joined, you were joining because you weren't just helping out somebody in your community, you were helping out family members, neighbors, people that you knew your whole life. Um, you know, and I, that's, I mean, obviously I joined because my grandfather, my father were both members, and um, along with the rest of my family. But um, it's different nowadays. You don't see membership from housing plants. They are their own little community, so they don't normally relate to your little towns. Um, you know, we, our department services four different housing plans now, and I, and I know you guys have way more than that. Um, you don't see members coming from these housing plans because not only do they not even associate with these little towns like Morgan and Cuddy and Oak Ridge and, and Federal and Dutch Hill and Portman's Farms, you know, or maybe or anything like that, um, they just don't have that sense of community anymore, I think. And, and that's, that's part of the problem. The other part is, you know, like Phil said, um, 30 years ago, whenever I joined, you know, we got acquired structures all the time to burn down. You know, somebody wants to build a new house, so you burn down their old one for them to save them some money. And um, no, there were no questions asked. You just went and you trained in it for a week, and then you had a big day where you lit it on fire, and you would light rooms on fire, and you'd go in there, and that was your training. You didn't go to state fire schools, the academy, to do things like that you do nowadays. Um, and then they just, you know, once you had some training, yeah, there, here's your gear, get on the truck and go. And that's all it took. Um, and sadly enough, those were the best trainings. Those were the most realistic trainings. Now when you go to North Park Fire Academy, you're in a concrete building. And, and the characteristics of a fire are nowhere near what they actually are in a house that's on fire. Um, they try to simulate as best they can, but they can't. And, you know, Essentials is, what, 180 hours now? And it's going up every couple of years, they add to it. Um, you got to have Essentials. You have to have Hazmat. When I joined, our Hazmat was a 16-hour, one-weekend class. Now it's, what, 80-hour uh, class for Hazmat. Um, so now you add another 80 hours on top of 120, 140 hours that you need for Essentials. And then there's everything else on top of that. You have... Vehicle rescue classes, road rescue classes, RIT classes, pump classes, driver operator classes. It's endless. There's probably a thousand different classes that you can take out there if you really want to. Um, so to get, we actually changed our, see you guys, be safe. Um, we actually changed our, we actually changed our membership requirements from 16 to 14 back in the early 2000s because um, <laughs> we wanted to try and get youngsters before they, you know, let's face it, whenever a teenager becomes 16, they're interested in girls or boys and getting their license and doing other things, going to the mall. So we figured maybe if you get them at 14, you might get them a little bit uh, sooner and get that bug. Um, it's, it's helped a little bit, but uh, it's, it's hard. It's hard to get somebody to commit to all that time. We're, we're not all like Bob where we leave uh, at our daughter's wedding. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. My wife would say that I would leave for many family functions. Your daughter would be on the truck in her dress. What are you talking about? Probably. <laughs> all right. Any other burning questions? Uh -huh. Burning questions? <laughs> um, hey, if, oh, the, there's a little, Mackenzie, little Mackenzie. I have a question. No, she might be a future firefighter then, right? <laughs> um, one last question to wrap it up. I, I'd love to hear uh, from each of these gentlemen in, in one sentence. Can you tell us what's uh, been rewarding about being involved uh, in the fire departments for you? What's, what's been most rewarding? Uh, I would say helping people is, in, 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 at least in my mind, is uh, one of the most important things there because uh, you just don't have a volunteer. Uh, you don't have the volunteer image that you used to have, and uh, it, it, it's, it's good to help people. And uh, I uh, spent my career selling life insurance, 
and I always thought that uh, I was helping people, which, which I was, and uh, it, it's just been in my mind that the most important thing that I see is uh, helping people. Thank you, Bob. Keith? I, I mean, just to echo some of what Bob said, helping people obviously is, is a very important factor in that, but um, I think to go along with that is um, the, the family, the com camaraderie with fire departments. And it's not just within your own station. Um, it's, it's amazing if you've ever been to a, a, a fire to see guys that may not have seen each other for a few months or whatever from neighboring departments. And, and you're up there, you're shaking everybody's hand. Hey, Don, how you doing? Hey, how you been? Where you been? You know, um, it, it's, it's a big family. It, and it's throughout the entire fire service as a whole. It's not just department to department. Um, you know, we all look after one another. We all take care of one another. Um, a perfect example was um, a week and a half ago when Chief uh, Scott Albertini was killed um, unexpectedly from McDonald Fire Department. Um, and the out... The, the outgoing, of, the outpouring of, of support for his family and for that community was just unbelievable. Um, and, and I would like to say unprecedented, but it's not. It's wherever you go, anytime that happens, it's just how we are. Um, so it is it's a very, very big brotherhood and sisterhood for that matter. Thank you. The one, the one that I can remember is which. Uh, I was living here in South Fayette, and I had my pager, and uh, there was a fire down in Heidelberg. <clears throat> so I ran down there, and uh, didn't know whose house it was or nothing like that. Ended up, uh, the guy put a second floor on the house, and the house caught on fire. He had a fireplace in there and didn't insulate it enough, and it ended up catching on fire. And <clears throat> I'm out there run a pumper and he comes over to me and hugs me and says thanks for being here. So that's my memory. Thank you, Carol. Me personally, I love uh, teaching the children. I love going out and doing pro programs for the children because their minds are so much like a sponge that if you tell them when they're young, they're going to remember it. And what's the best thing is me doing my job as a bus driver when the kids will get on the bus and say, wait, you're a fireman, you're not a bus driver. <laughs> and I have to explain to them, I do this fire thing for free, you know. But it's, it's, I love doing it with the kids and letting them, teaching the kids. Great. No bus driving for free now. <laughs> Well, uh, gentlemen, we certainly thank you for being here tonight, and we appreciate all the volunteer service that you've dedicated to South Fayette Township, um, as well as all of your colleagues in our four departments, Oak Ridge, Sturgeon, Fairview, and South Fayette. Let's give these guys a round of applause, please. say a couple of things. Um, I'm the Park and Recreation Director here in the Township and I just want to extend a thanks to each fire department. Um, I just came here in 2015 and I've been working on expanding programs and events for the community for all ages and um, each fire department has um, helped with that cause tremendously. Um, they're constantly there volunteering, assisting in anything that I possibly need. Um, they're attending our summer camps with the kids. Um, they're attending our Touch a Truck event where the kids get to come and explore all the vehicles. So they are involved in the community in many ways, and I just wanted to extend the thanks, because um, it definitely makes um, the community events um, very special to have you guys involved. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right, just wanted to uh, make a note. Um, before you head out, please feel free to check out some of the uh, materials that are on display on the side tables, some great photos and uh, fire department paraphernalia. Uh, also, visit our township table. We have some uh, event flyers for events such as Touch a Truck. Uh, we'll have fire trucks on display uh, from the fire departments. The kids can go on, and adults too, and go on and, and sit up in there, and you'll let them honk the horns and everything, right? Oh. <laughs> also, uh, we have the 175th anniversary shirts and chocolate bars to benefit the Historical Society. 
And of course, uh, please take a cookie on your way out and be careful on the way home. Thank you again.